Welcome to Nursing School Explained in this video about bladder cancer. As always, we go through the order of operations, the way we look at a certain disease process, the same way. So starting with risk factors. Uh, people between 60 and 70 years old, and especially female patients, are at higher risk for bladder cancer as well as those who are smokers. So 50% of people who smoke is likely to get bladder cancer. So very important to focus on our health prevention efforts and education here. Um, also women who've had radiation therapy for cervical cancer and uh, patients who are on Actos, which is a diabetes medication, an oral medication, are at higher likelihood to develop bladder cancer. So signs and symptoms, many times the cancer grows undetected and painless and is only discoverable through microscopic or gross hematuria that is usually painless. So unless the patient has gross hematuria, many times they don't even go to see somebody and when they just have continued microscopic hematuria, they don't really know about it and that's why it's sometimes detected not until in the later stages of the cancer. Other symptoms might include dysuria, frequency, and urgency of urination because of the irritation that cancer causes. Now for diagnostic tests, a urine cytology is usually sent off and that basically is a test to check the urine for any malignant cells that are spilling in the urine sample. But the most reliable test is a cystoscopy with a biopsy. And a cystoscopy basically means a scope through the urethra inserted into the bladder where the physician can take a look inside the bladder to take a closer look at that tumor and then also obtain a biopsy and send that off to the lab for analysis. And then as always, we can check ultrasounds, CAT scans and MRIs to further detect any um, invasion to surrounding organs or any metastasis and so forth. As for treatment, so it always depends on the staging and the type of cancer that has been detected from that biopsy, from that tissue sample. So if it's a relatively small tumor that is non-invasive, a transurethral resection can be performed, which basically means that through the urethra, a scope and instruments are inserted and the tumor is removed. Next up, so for, for cancers that are a little bit uh, of a higher stage, a segmental cystectomy will be performed, meaning a segment of the bladder will be removed, removing that tumor and hopefully any surrounding tissues that are also affected. Now, thirdly, um, if the cancer is invasive or involves the entirety of the bladder wall, a radical cystectomy is performed and that means that the bladder completely is removed. In female patient, that usually also means removal of the uterus, cervix, ovaries and the urethra and in male patients, the prostate and the seminal vesicles. And that is because these adjacent organs are so close that they're likely to be affected from the cancer that has usually been spreading from that primary site. So it's best to get these other organs removed at the same time. So now if we're left with a cystectomy, meaning that the bladder is completely removed, some sort of a urinary diversion has to be created to let the urine drain from the kidneys because the bladder is no longer there. And check out my separate video about urinary diversions to see how they work because there are some that are continent and some that are incontinent. There has been a lot of progress made in these types of surgeries. And then many times as with any cancer, the patient might need chemo, radiation or immunotherapy. And there is also a therapy available that's called intravesical therapy, where the vesicle here is the bladder. So a chemo uh, therapy agent or immunotherapy agent is instilled into the bladder through a catheter once a week for about six to 12 weeks. And while this agent is instilled into the bladder, the patient uh, is instructed to hold it as long as possible and also change their body position so that that agent that has the medicine has been instilled into the bladder can kind of swoosh around in the bladder and um, treat different sites and then hoping that this um, these agents 
will help to locally treat the patients or the tumors and that is usually for not so um, advanced cancers. And all of these treatments that I just discussed will require frequent cystoscopies after any of these treatments to check for recurrence of the tumor, to check for the urinary diversion, the patency, and those kind of things to make sure everything is flowing well. Because to keep in mind, everything upstream from the bladder or any kind of urinary diversion involves the kidneys, and they are such an important organ that we definitely want to keep a close eye on. And then as for nursing care for patients with bladder cancer, we want to make sure that we know how to manage the different kind of catheters and diversions and of course educate our patients on how to manage those devices at home. After a surgery, any kind of surgery that involves the bladder, it's always good to instruct the patient to drink large amounts of water for about one week to flush out any kind of scar tissue, to flush out any bleeding, to dilute any clots that might be forming because just like on the outside on your skin, on the inside of your bladder a scab will form and blood clots can form and then if they are not dilute by large amounts of water they can clog up the catheter or any kind of device and then again we have a clogged up problem and we might um, be affecting the kidneys. The patient should expect the urine to be pink um, because it's been diluted with these large amounts of water, but they also should be cautioned that if there's any bright red urine, that usually means that there's fresh bleeding. So maybe that healing tissue on top of the removal of the bladder cancer site has opened up for some reason, and bright red blood usually means active bleeding, so they should notify their physician. Um, seven to ten days or four seven to ten days after the surgery the expectation is that the urine will, will look anywhere from a dark red to a rust color as things kind of um, start to heal and that's a nice sign of the healing process. Certainly we want to manage the patient's pain and if narcotics are involved also administer a stool softener and educate our patients appropriately. We also want to teach coping mechanisms and refer them to support groups because there can be some huge issues with these urinary diversions, with body image, all the sexual organs have been removed. So there's a lot going on there that the patient certainly can benefit from support groups. And uh, also we want to focus on body image and sexuality again because of the uh, sexual organs that have been removed and body image for any kind of urinary diversion that the patient might be having. So thank you for watching this video on bladder cancer. Please also check out the other videos where I discuss the different types of urinary diversions so you can learn a little bit more about those, how they work and how the, benefit, how the patient will benefit from one versus the other after, of course, they've discussed the options with their surgeon. Thanks for watching.